Hey everyone, just noticed the mistake in the video. The A in EBITDA stands for amortization, not appreciation. I still think you're going to get value. Enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome back to theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, it's theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Keep your questions coming in. Thank you very much. Uh, for those of you who are brand new, welcome. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Make sure you subscribe. I don't care if you're on YouTube or the blog. Uh, just make sure you subscribe wherever you are, okay? And also follow me on all social networks. You don't want to miss out on cool things I do, um, especially Snapchat, right? For those of you watching in the future, um, I don't think Snapchat will have lost much steam. In fact, I think it's gaining more. I think it's very similar to where Facebook was in 2008. So add me there. Username is Dan Sparrow, same as the username on YouTube. All right, so today's question, for those of you who don't know how this works, you send a question. I'll reply to everybody and then I'll choose a few questions and I'll make videos out of them, right? So one of the questions I got today from, or not today, I got a few days ago actually from email, dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com, is uh, in regards to selling a research site at a multiple, right? And for those of you who don't know how it works, typically the metric used um, when a company is looking to get acquired or a company is looking to acquire another company is EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and appreciation. And you don't need to know what all that is right now, but a multiple of that. So that's essentially your pre-tax profit. So let's say a site is grossing $2 million a year and let's say they profit a million dollars a year. So they have a 50% profit margin, which is very common in this industry. Uh, their earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and appreciation, EBITDA, would be a million. Now, this person's asking, what is a common multiple? And in this industry, this brings up a really good, this is a really good question because it raises a lot of vulnerabilities when it comes to purchasing research clinics. First of all, how many PIs are involved? right? Um, you can easily gross $2 million with just one PI and five to 10 staff members, okay? Maybe a little more, maybe 10 staff members because $2 million is a pretty good amount. So you probably have to be running about 20 studies a year for that. Um, but it's easy. And, and my point is you can be doing that with one principal investigator. So to say that you should be paying a multiple of their earnings, uh, for example, other industries charge five times EBITDA as a sales price for a company. So if a company, what company A wants to acquire company B, they'll look at their EBITDA and then there's a metric associated with that or there's a multiple associated with that metric for that specific industry. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's 10. For some of the tech companies, it could be like 20, right? That's called the multiple. So in research, I think the multiple is somewhere between th around three, uh, but there's an interesting caveat when it comes to research. So just, just for simplicity's sake, in the example I brought up with a one million EBITDA, um, a common asking price would be $3 million as the sales price of the company. The company is valued at $3 million, which is three times EBITDA. Now, there's lots of vulnerabilities here in research because like I just mentioned, this could all potentially be done with one PI. And if that PI is an owner, what are the chances of him continuing working that hard or at that pace and continuing to bring up, to bring in those revenues when he no longer has an incentive to do that because he just sold the company, right? So you gotta look at those kind of factors how many PIs are there? And even if the PI is not an owner, if it's all dependent on one PI and the PI does not like the new ownership group and decides to leave or decides to just put in a lot less effort instead of going all in like 80% of his time and effort dedicated to research, he's now going 30 or even 20 because he doesn't like the new ownership. That's a problem. You overpaid. I don't suggest you... Um, you pay any multiple of EBITDA. I don't even. I wouldn't even suggest paying the same EBITDA for that for that site because 
the profits could change in a year. If, if that PI decides that he doesn't like to work with you, it's over. Now, the exceptions are if you have numerous PIs and if you have a system in place where it's not all dependent on one PI. So if you have, for that same company, five PIs, all right, and each one's bringing in $200,000 of revenue a year, all right? Or actually, they'd be bringing in $400,000 each uh, for $2 million. That'd be a little less risky if I was someone doing an acquisition of a site because now if one PI leaves, okay, it hurts, but it's still only 20% of the gross revenue, right? So you want to look at those kind of factors as well. You want to look at systems. Clearly, the more diversified they are, the more studies they have, the more therapeutic areas they have, the higher that multiple should be. Um, and also, the more PIs they have, uh, the, the higher of a multiple it should be because the, the company, the fate of the company does not depend on the decisions of one PI or one key personnel. And, and as is often the case with these companies that are only generating like $2 million a year, and I say only like that's a small number, um, is that it can be easily done with one person, one PI. So I would not pay for any site that is owned by just one PI and all the studies go through one PI. I would not pay anything for that unless I can get like one-fourth of the EBITDA as my sales price. Then I might consider doing it, but it's just too risky. Now, what I would do instead is build my own site at that point. However, there are some people with deep pockets, investors, venture capital firms. What you can do is buy a research clinic that is on the cusp of becoming either an SMO, like a lo much larger group that can expand nationally, or maybe you're a CRO and you can just acquire them and plug them into your infrastructure. I would look at companies with all the factors I mentioned before, so numerous PIs, no, no dependency on any PI or any one staff member, uh, and then having a profit of at least $5 million a year, right? Then you can do a multiple of three to five. And also, a lot of this depends on the economy as well. I mean, when there was a boom in the last real estate bubble, it was common for businesses to be acquired at 10 times earnings, right? Now, it's more common for five unless you're in the tech space. So research is always a little bit strange when it comes to this. Um, there's definitely a lot of money that could be generated with just a few people. Uh, barriers to entry are relatively low, so I would not be messing around with any companies generating anything less than $5 million a year if I'm looking to acquire, unless you can get an extremely good deal, like I mentioned before, one-fourth of EBITDA. Otherwise, if you go above the $5 million range, you know you're buying something that's more stable, more secure, less risky, you can go three to five times earnings, right? So, Dan from The Clinical Trials Guru, hope this helps you out. Good luck with the sale. Let me know how it goes. I'd be curious to learn more. Dan from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Take care.